jump right into today is which position group does the postponement benefit the most? Now, we know there's not going to be a fall season. We have been postponed to spring. Sammy, tell us who is going to benefit the most here. The Utah secondary. Obviously, hands down, that group was the most decimated after the draft last year. Not only do you lose Jalen Johnson to the draft, you also lose Josh Nurse, Javelin Guidry, Julian Blackman. There's four of your starters right off the bat just gone. So I think that's going to be a huge. You lost R.J. Hubert in the Pac-12 championship game to a torn ACL. This gives him a little bit more time to rehab, get back up to 100% where we want him to be because he's going to be probably one of those starting safeties for Utah. But then this also gives the incoming freshman class a lot of time to get more prepped. Like Clark Phillips, the highest touted recruit Utah's ever landed. He now has a little bit more time to get used to stuff. Um, also, Kane Savage at the other corner spot. And then even, um, sorry, uh, Nate Ritchie. Nate Ritchie, the safety out of Lone Peak High School, gives him some time to get caught up in that safety position as well. But then you also have kids who have been on the roster last year and saw time, like to Travis Broughton, to get him more up to speed and get him maybe – contending for that second corner spot. So honestly, in my opinion, I think it's going to be the secondary for Utah. What about you, Cole? Uh, the, the, the offense for me, specifically uh, the quarterbacks uh, and specifically getting even deeper uh, Bentley. And the reason I say that is because, you know, the, last week we talked a lot about that quarterback race and uh, you know, we had some differing opinions. You know, I, I had talked about how I think Bentley um, will be the starter because of the experience and, um, you know, he, he's played a lot more football, collegiate football, um, the Cameron rising. Now you obviously supported, uh, the Cameron rising because he's been with the team longer. Now I think this benefits Jake because he, he gets to be with the team longer. He gets to, um, uh, uh add that to, uh, what he already has in his, his experience, uh, is just time with the team. And so I think he benefits the most because I think that in itself will, will, will uh, further his chances of, of taking the snaps uh, come springtime. Yeah, I see that. But honestly, I'm not worried about the quarterback position. You have two, like we talked about last week, you have two very viable options on that in that quarterback spot. But if anyone in on the offense is like an area to like circle, in my opinion, it's the Utah offensive line. You have you you last year you lost. Um, one starter, one or two potential starters, but you were playing a lot of like freshmen and sophomore on that line with the exception of Orlando Umana, who was a junior at the time. Nick Ford has really solidified himself as one of Utah's best offensive linemen on the team right now. Same with Umana. But I think that offensive line, you're going to have a little bit more time for them to get working more, like working better and meshing together a little bit and they can finally solidify a lineup that would work on the offensive line for Utah. There was a lot of substitutions last year. Now we're going to get some more depth. Um, Bamadele Oleseni is finally going to be able to participate in like a full camp instead of like the abbreviated camp that he participated in last fall because he like struggled to get to campus. So you have that offensive line, I think, is a bigger issue for Utah than the than the quarterback position. Well, Utah, Utah's coming off of uh, a, a difficult situation. They lost a lot of defensive weapons to, you know, to your point. Uh, a lot of um, guys that made big plays, Julian Blackman, you know, Francis Bernard, fantastic defensive players to the NFL. But they also lost the two biggest pieces of their offense in Tyler Homie and Zach Moss. And Tyler, to me, was uh, not the best passer. He, I think, I think they're much more geared towards a running offense. And so I think with this time off, Utah now has to uh, change the way that their offense is going to work. It's going to be a pass, passing offense if they choose Bentley uh, in the spring. And so he has to have this time in order to uh, get that starting position and then to, to work with the wide receivers who are an absolute arsenal. And if they can perfect that and they can use this time to their advantage, Utah is going to be uh, much better off offensively in the spring than they would have been uh, if the season had started um, in the fall. Yeah, I get that. But also – you can't say that Utah's going to go to a fully, a full like pass heavy offense. You still have two very good running backs at Utah with Brumfield and Wilmore, Jor uh, Devin Brumfield and Jordan Wilmore. So you have these backs that are also that backed up Moss last year, who took reps last year, who took some of the burden off Moss, who have proven themselves to be really good running backs. So I'm not worried about that. I can see if Utah goes more to like a 60 40 
situation, but I don't see Utah going to a strictly like a, like a Washington State in an air raid offense. That's just not who Utah is. That's not who Kyle Whittingham is. That's not who Andy Ludwig is, in my opinion, for this team. Like, we have offensive weapons that are really good, like Britton Covey, uh, uh, Brian Thompson, Brant Keithy. But at the other, at, on the other side, you still have these running backs who are so good and so talented and so great at what they do. So I just think there's a lot more question marks with that Utah defense than there are with that with that Utah offense. Sammy, what do you think the biggest um, hole in the defense is that they need to uh, focus on with with this extra time? So corners or linebackers. So with the corners, you lose both. You lose all three of your corners that took reps last year. You lose Jalen Johnson. You lose Josh Nurse. And you lose Tariq Lewis. You lose all three of them. So you're going to have to fill those corner spots first and foremost. But then the linebacker, you lost half of your really good duo of Francis Bernard and Devin Lloyd. Lloyd's going to be back this year, but who's going to take that second linebacker spot? Is it going to be Andrew Mata'afa? Is it going to be Nephi Sewell? Who's going to be in that second linebacker spot is also really important to me. I'm not worried about the Utah defensive line. They've proven time in and time out, like time again, that they just reload with talent just over and over and over. And even though we lost Bradley and I and Lecky Foto on that line and John Penasini, you're still you still have Mika Tafua, Max Tupai, Huatui Pututau. You have all of these guys who took snaps last year and who were big, made big plays for the Utah defense. So it's the corners or the linebackers. Yeah, and and when you bring up those names, that's why I um to me it seems that the the offense is just gonna it's just going to benefit more. You know, you, you mentioned uh, uh, the running back game, and those those guys did take um, some snaps, but I think they are lacking a little bit of experience uh, because Zach Moss just dominated uh, in the backfield. He was taking the majority of the reps. He was scoring the touchdowns. I mean, the guy was the – he's the all-time Utah leading rusher, and so I think that, uh, you know, the, the offense just has a lot to work on, specifically the quarterback as well. Um, those running backs and the, they've got to have a good chemistry with all of those wide receivers. You know, you, you had mentioned, you know, you've got, you know, Keithy, Covey. Um, and so these, these guys have got to get a chemistry going. And that's why, um, you know, in my opinion, the, the offense is definitely uh, going to take this time and improve, but hopefully Sammy, both of them improve, you know, we're all on the same team here. We're all on the same side. You know, we, we don't want to see one more than the other. We want to see the team come together uh, as fully as possible. Totally. I'm not worried about the chemistry within this wide receiver group. Also, honestly, like you lose one receiver, you lose Damari Simpkins. Um, you still have that core group that you had last year. Of course, like some, you're going to add new pieces and stuff like that. But at the time, to- right now, this Utah wide receiving core is probably it's really solid. It's really solid. And it's probably one of the most talented wide receiving cores we've had since joining the PAC 12, in my opinion, like it's, you have Samson Nakua, you have Brian Thompson, you have Brant Keithy, you have Solomon Enos. All of these are really, really, really big playmakers for Utah in that was receiving core. So I'm not worried about the chemistry between the wide receivers. Um, I do want to see the chemistry between the wide receivers and the quarterbacks. Absolutely. these wide receivers have been with rising before, so they know what he's capable of. But I want to see how they react to having Bentley if they have to work on something like that. Absolutely. Well, it'll be interesting to see how the team develops, um, you know, what things Whittingham's able to do. That man works magic with with uh, the roster and the players that he's given. Um, 